So then, uh, we need to see death and its allied phenomena in its suchness. That is to say, well, it is just uh, the, the, after a certain time, as the leaves in the fall disintegrate and fall off the tree, and we say, well, what a lovely autumn it was, this New England trees, very gorgeous season. So in the same way, human beings fall apart. And well, we say, that's terrible. But supposing the unanimity of the social attitude was quite different, and there is no reason why it shouldn't be. And falling apart is considered quite the thing to do. After all, it uh, helps to clean things up, it gets uh, old stuff out of the way, and uh, so we, us, I, can all go on. We renew, we come back. And so uh, the, the whole thing you see is this. You can't suddenly switch from death as an awful horror to death as a great event. You have to go to a certain intermediate point where you have to see it just as that. This is very useful in getting yourself accustomed to all kinds of queer things. Um, there was a woman who was a good friend of mine who moved into the country and found her house was full of black widow spiders. Well, she was horrified. But being very sensible, she brought a book about black widows and she got a model, uh, there's the things that they sell in biolog from biological firms, a, a dried black widow spider encased in a plastic cube. And she got a magnifying glass and she studied this thing. And she learned everything about black widow spiders. Finally, she captured a live one and looked at it under a magnifying glass. And slowly, 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 she appreciated the suchness of it. I mean, it's a thing that goes this way and that way, and it has things that go like this, and it bites, and it does this and that. And that's that. Well, having appreciated the suchness of it, she relieved herself of her fear. And then she learned after a while to respect them, and then really to be on very good terms with them. <laughs> she knew how to keep out of their way and what their habits were. Always when she picked up a shoe, shake the shoe, don't put your foot in without shaking the shoe first. Little things like that. <laughs> so, uh, so, somebody wrote me the other day from uh, Santa Barbara and said that in her part of the country there are more private planes than anywhere else in the United States and they fly at less than a thousand feet and they keep going over her place. She says, I'm horrified to find myself running out of doors, shaking my fist at these planes and using foul language. She said, I just can't stand them at any price. So I wrote back, I told her the story about the spiders and said, now what you're to do is you get yourself a certain book, which is a complete uh, photographic catalog of all makes of private planes in the world. And you are to identify them and every time a plane goes over, look it up in a book and see what kind it is. Go down to the airport, uh, watch them come in and go out, get rides and uh, never miss one. Always get right into that plane situation because then this constant over the house, but you can get with it, you see, and you could say <laughs> I, uh, People hate drumming. Every time people start playing the conga drums, they call the police. Because there's something about that which seems threatening. They think, why the cannibals are in the dark, they're out after us. And still you get with it yourself, you see, and you move with that, then However noisy it is, it isn't a problem any longer. But you have to see the suchness of it first. That it is just doing this kind of a boom -ba -chi -boom, boom -boom -ba -chi boom boom And that's that. That's what it is. And it isn't a threat, nor is it for that matter a promise.